So, okay, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Jakob Kotman from Matterlag Group, uh, Alana Spuru Guzik Group in University of Toronto. Jakob did his doctoral studies in numerical quantum chemistry in Humboldt University of Berlin. His work focused on adaptive representation of correlated wave functions using multi resolution analysis, and afterwards he joined the, the Alana Spuru Guzik Group in Toronto and he's currently working on quantum algorithms for quantum chemistry and quantum optics. So Jakob, welcome and the virtual floor is yours. Um, hello, welcome everyone. Um, uh, first question, like, do you see my screen and do you see the GitHub address at the bottom? Um, yes, at least okay. I can see it. Okay, because I have some, some line there. I wasn't sure if it's like cut off, okay. In that case, the whole screen is shared. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Alva, for the introduction. Um, also, thanks to Alva and uh, for Michal, like for organizing all of this. I guess it was a lot of work to get it done. Um, and also, thanks for Pierre Luc, which who did like the the first talk, and I'm especially thankful because he also introduced like a bit about quantum computing and about what's going on in the field. Um, so, like, I'm gonna present you like. Uh, a software package that we were developing within the group. It's called Tequila, and it's a Python-based uh, development tool for those quantum algorithms, like, for example, what uh, Pierre Luc showed you before. And maybe we just dive directly in. Um, if you want to get access of the code, it's like open source and freely usable. You can also feel free to extend it, like send pull requests or questions. Um, you can reach it over our GitHub page. It's the Asperoguzik group, and then it's under Tequila. Um, yeah, feel free to check it out. Um, so like the general idea was like, we have a lot like, especially in the field of quantum algorithms, like a lot of new ideas are like coming up and a lot of things are being tried out. And it's like, it's a bit related to the field of chem quantum chemistry in the sense that like for a lot of those algorithms, like it's, more or less like heuristics are important. Like you have to you have to demonstrate somehow that an idea that you have actually works. And it's in a lot of cases, it's like hard to prove that it will work for like any specific case. But like if you can show that it works for like interesting cases for some fields, you're already good in most cases. So like the idea was a bit like to have like a tool which makes it easy to develop those ideas and have like functional code quite fast. So like more or less you're meeting like in group seminar or just in the coffee break and you have some ideas and you scribble it on a blackboard, like for example, schematically shown here, which is more or less like, it's just an example, but like if you think about it, it's more or less like abstractly how to initialize a Bell state on a quantum computer using like those abstract gates. And then if you want to use it, for example, and then say, okay, then I want to like minimize the expectation value of this in of this trial state with some Hamiltonian, which we defined here, and then we want to minimize the square of it. Um, and the idea was that you can build code from this like quite fast, and that it's like easy to have like an initial version and like to test things out. Um, and that's more or less like how the tequila code would look. So like the idea is that it more or less the code that you write on the top level that it resembles what you would write on a blackboard. So like that it's also easy to read and like easy to extend. Um, the whole idea was a bit inspired by the madness package, uh, which does uh, numerical quantum chemistry and where I also like did some work like in the past. And yeah, I think everything I do in coding wise is more or less inspired by this. So like, I guess I have to mention it here. Um, it's actually pretty cool, like it doesn't do quantum computing, but classical quantum chemistry, but it's like a similar approach, like the top level looks like blackboard. Um, <clears throat> and then the other thing was like, there are already, <coughs> excuse me, there are already like a lot of packages out there, like which do like certain tasks for those quantum computing algorithms, like for example, open fermion, which is used like a lot to initialize uh, Qubit Hamiltonians from fermionic Hamiltonians. And then we didn't want, don't want to reinvent the wheel here, but like to efficiently use all those packages. 
And at the very end, you have something like interfaces to real quantum computers or like to simulators. And like, depending on what you want to do, you can pick which of them you want to have without like re-implementing your code all the time. This is more or less like the high level idea of how it works in the back. Um, <clears throat> a bit like details, like what Tequila gives you, like it gives you like a lot of um, abstract structures, which you can combine um, and play with. Um, for example, you can create quantum circuits. You can create quantum Hamiltonians. You could also create an Hamiltonian and use it as the generator of a circuit. Like for example, a lot of times those gates are like classified over their generators. So like Tequila understands these languages. Um, then you can combine those two to expectation values. And in principle, you could optimize those expectation values, but maybe you want to manipulate them a little bit before. Like for example, you say you take multiple circuits, multiple Hamiltonians, you form expectation values out of them, and then you combine them in any way. Like uh, we will have some examples like in the next slides. So like what it does, it makes these abstract objective functions and those can then be translated to those quantum backends and back. So like, this is more or less how it works in the back end, uh, like in the back on a very abstract level. And it's more or less for you as user like to decide um, in how much depth you wanna like enter into this. You can use it purely on the top level for algorithm development, but you can also use it like on lower levels. Like for example, if you wanna do like more efficient translation or if you wanna like implement a new backend you can just implement that new backend, include it into the system and just test it with the existing examples, like how it performs. Um, this would be like the tequila hello world. So to say um, what it does is like, it's like a two qubit, it's, it's a one qubit example, more or less like you do like a single rotation, you initialize some Hamiltonian and then you form this expectation value and then you optimize the square of it. Uh, in principle, you can also do other things like, for example, uh, we support automatic differentiation. Um, you could compute the gradient of those things, simulate the gradients, then do the second derivative or whatever, or like combine those things. And in principle, those expectation values, it's again like you can combine them more or less like on how you would write it on Blackboard. Like you can add them, subtract them and all of those things. Um, if you want to run on a real quantum computer, for example, uh, since we're supporting Qiskit and Qiskit is currently like has open, open access quantum platforms from IBM, the syntax would more or less look exactly the same. Like you call this simulate function and then you just give like a few more keywords to tell it, okay, use the Qiskit backend and then especially like run, for example, on the IBM computer in Rome. Um, and uh, since my background is in quantum chemistry, that's more or less the, the chemistry hello world where you like initialize a minimal basis H2 and the corresponding unitary couple cluster style circuit. It's like, <clears throat> that's more or less how the code looks like at the top level. Like those are like the abstract structures that are created. Um, and maybe a little bit more details about like what these objectives are. Um, so <clears throat> those ex objectives are like abstract data structures, which hold like a list of abstract expectation values and like a transformation. And how the system works is like that if you, for example, hit simulate, all those expectations values are like compiled to whatever backend you have installed or whatever backend you chose are simulated there, then it's passed back, everything is fed into the transformation and this is what you get back in the end as a user on the top level. Um, those objectives can be combined, like you can add, subtract, uh, differentiate or like transform them with arbitrary functions that you defined. And what you get back is always again, like an objective, like it's the same data structure more or less. Yeah, like you don't leave this room of objective structures which makes it like easy to use on the top level because you don't really have to think about what exactly is in your objective. Um, little example, um, let's say you already defined like two of those expectation values. Um, you could just add them together. What happens is like your new, ex your new objective just holds a list of two expectation values and it holds an ex abstract transformation which says like 
add the two elements in the list together. Another example would be if you scale it and then square it, one of them, the list is then just one and then the transformation is something else. Now you could take those two objectives and also combine them in a way. Let's say we take the first objective and exponentiate it with the second one. Then it's again, what you get back is another objective. It holds like the three expectation values and this is like the transformation here. It's like first do this transformation on the first two, um, then scale the second one and square it and the result exponentiate those two. That's more or less how it works. Um, same for gradients. Um, if you do, uh, if you do gradients, what tequila basically does in the back is like it uses the so-called shift rule to evaluate like analytical gradients on a quantum computer. It looks a bit like this. Um, if you have an expectation value that is dependent on a parameterized gate, you can get like the analytic gradient by like evaluating it with the same parameter shifted in two directions and taking the difference of it. While like this function in the beginning depends on if this from parameter did undergo a transformation before. It's something like an inner derivative. Um, in order to keep track of all this, we use like the automatic differentiation package JAX from Google. And the actual quantum part is done by the shift rule, which you, for example, can find in this like really awesome paper. Um, and like the shift rule is like, it becomes like more and more standard, like in current quantum packages, like where the first one was Penny Lane, which successfully implemented it and they cleared more or less the path. I think now it's like, it's a must have for every quantum package um, that's around. Um, there's a bit more complications like, but this is just some information about what's going on in the back. Like if like your parameterized gates are not somehow generalized rotations, then this shift rule doesn't really work. But what does work is like, if you, if you take those abstract unitary operations and compile them into gates, which follow the shift rule and then use a combination of the chain rule, the shift rule, and again, like uh, automatic differentiation of transformations on the variables in order like to get the gradient of your objective back. But this, this is more or less what happens in the back. And what you get back is then again, just another objective with like new expectation values, which is the gradient of your old one. Um, <clears throat> just like, a bit information again, what's happening in the back. Like if you, for example, have one objective and you hit simulate, what happens is like you have these abstract objectives, which has lists of expectation values and these callable transformations. This is then somehow compiled and translated to one of those backends, let's say Qiskit or like the QLAX simulator, depending on what you want to do actually. And then what you get back is like the same objective structures just that the circuits that I hold are not abstract anymore. They're actually the actual simulator package circuit type. So like, that's like maybe interesting information if you're trying to do something like an optimizer, then it usually makes sense like to hit this compile function first in order like to avoid retranslating to the same backend every time you run the thing. Um, so like, yeah. Um, but okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spare you like with more details of how Tequila operates in the back and let's, let's do some examples um, to get a feeling how it can be used. Um, one example would be, it's again like, yeah, you scribble something on a blackboard and you say like, okay, let's use a circuit like this, which is again, a bit like a bell state initialization. Um, let's use as a parameterized gate here, something like a, a Y rotation but instead of putting the angle in directly, we put in an exponential function of minus the angle squared. And we use this Hamiltonian, which I more or less chose like arbitrarily um, for this example here. And then what we're trying to achieve is like, we make like a loss function or an objective, which is the expectation value of this Hamiltonian with this circuit, with this gate, and then plus, uh, the exponential of the negative of the square of the gradient of the same expectation value. And then just see what this gets us. Um, 
Um, since this is like a one-dimensional thing, since I only have one parameter here, I can actually show you like the whole loss function or energy surface, however you want to call it. It looks a bit like this. So like, if for example, your task would be like to find the global minimum of this, it's already like harder than other like small examples. You see like the function is mocking you a little bit, telling you it's hard to optimize. Um, and one idea, like if you would be interested in finding the minimum here uh, would be instead of using a gradient based optimizer, which for example, if you would start here, you would get trapped in this local minima. Uh, you could use, for example, a Bayesian optimizer like the Phoenix optimizer. Um, and the code to do this with Tequila is then more or less this. So like if you compare here are like the initialization of those things. So like this is our Hamiltonian. It's more or less the same as here. Um, this is the definition of this Y rotation gate. And then this is how you can like put in the transformed, um, the transformed uh, angle here. Um, and I also multiplied with P like to have the angles like in units of P. Um, and then here you form the objective, like you first form the gradient of this expectation value, and then you just combine those things together, like to give you back this sort of formula. And then we just run it with the, with the Phoenix optimizer, which is like really cool because like the optimizer doesn't really care, like if it gets inputs from a quantum function or from anything else. It was originally designed like for automatizing like robotic lab flows, but we just thought like, let's try it out for this example. Um, what you get back is more or less this, like the orange points are like the points that the Bayesian optimizer and Phoenix visited. And you can see it more or less like it found like all the local minima. And also it figured out like quite soon, like that this is actually like the interesting area here. Just a little, but it's, it's just a toy example, like to illustrate usage a little bit. You can also find it on our GitHub, like in the tutorial section. Um, then some like real world examples. In the end, um, uh, since my background is in quantum chemistry, I usually always like to do chemistry examples. Um, this is like a, a really simple example of like you take in a two orbital active space of some molecule and then you say, let's use this circuit template and try to optimize the wave function within this active space. This is how the full code looks. It's again like, I hope at least it's similar to what's on the blackboard and that would be like the result of it. Um, but maybe if we have now like this opportunity of like having this uh, generalized form of those objectives, um, maybe use some algorithm where we actually need more than one expectation value. And like one example for this is like, if you're interested in excited states, like you have one molecule, what you see on the x-axis is like, say it's a diatomic orbital, I think it's beryllium hydride or something, um, and you stretch it, this is your potential energy surface, but this is like the electronic ground state, and of course you also have like excited states here. And like a way to optimize them on quantum computers is like uh, you minimize the ground state, and then you minimize the next state, and you ensure orthogonality to the ground state by like including an objective which looks a bit like this. It's like the, it's like um, the, one of these unitaries creates your current state, the other one creates the already solved ground state and it's, it's, it's the same as the square of the overlap. It's just retranslated into the formulation of those objectives. And then you repeat this for every subsequent state. So like you solve sequentially. That works quite good, like if you're interested in those low-lying excited, excited states. Um, that's again, that's the full code. Let's not go through it. Like you can find it online in the tutorials. It's just like to prove that it's actually simple to write it. Like I chose again, like a small system here. Like the reason for this is because then I can use this like very small template circuit in order like to solve it. But this is the actual research and sci science like behind it, like to come up then with like circuits which can actually solve your problems. Um, and this was actually not a cartoon, like this is like the real result like for this beryllium molecule. Um, 
just like in the very end, if you want to do something like larger, let's say you have like, let's do some unitary couple cluster operations um, and let's pre-compute like the CC2 model in order like to find an order of our unitary couple cluster operators and automatize this a little bit and like check what we get out, like just to play with it. Like this would be like the workflow, what you do. Um, and as an example, let's use the Pi system of benzene, like to use something more interesting than linear molecules. Um, this is more or less how the Tequila code looks for this. Like first you can initialize molecules in active spaces by like picking the orbitals by their irreducible representations. You chose a basis set. In principle, you can also choose a qubit encoding or transformation. Um, if you don't choose it, like Jordan Wigner is used as a default. In principle, you can also do Bravi Kitaev, Bravi Kitaev tree, or like whatever's implemented. Um, or you could do your own if you want to try. Um, then next thing is like create the actual qubit Hamiltonian. Like once created, you created the abstract molecule like from the quantum chemistry module. Like getting the Hamiltonian is quite easy. You just call make Hamiltonian. And then it makes the Hamiltonian depending on like which uh, active space and which uh, transformation you chose above. Um, then we're gonna need the CC2 amplitudes. That's the same, like if you have Psi4 installed, like our module can like compute those from Psi4, get it from Psi4 and like give you like the active space amplitudes back. Um, I don't show the full code like to create the circuit, but like what you more or less do, like you iterate over all those amplitudes and for all those indices, like you make an excitation generator, which is like the generator which transform, which gives you like exactly the generator for this unitary couple cluster type action back. Um, and then you can use like a trotterized gate with one step to find some angle, like let's name it the same as, uh, as the indices. And then in the end, just run it again with the same minimize function and then here are just some example results, like you could use a gradient free optimization like Kobila or like a gradient based one like BFGS and just compare like their performance. Did you reach the minimum? Did you not? Like what can you do like to improve your circuits? Can you change the order? Like those are like potential points where you can start like actually playing like with the real science behind it. Um, last but not least, uh, acknowledgement, like a lot of people have contributed to Tequila. Um, I have to mention like Sumner especially like who did a lot of work on it. Um, and also like Tere, Cyril, Abinav and uh, Alba who is the host today from our group. Um, currently other people of our group are working like on new projects on Tequila. A lot of them in quantum chemistry so like stay tuned for like updates. And we also have people like from the Ismailov group um, who are implementing currently their algorithms. Like one is uh, nearly finished, which is made by Thompson and Flat. Um, it's uh, it's going to be pretty cool because it's like automatically optimizing like measurements in your Hamiltonian, which is not tied to quantum chemistry. Like it just works in almost all cases, depending on the structure of this. But it's like analyzed and done in the back for you. So like. If you want to use tequila like on a real quantum computer, that's definitely, I would say, like something you should include standard wise. Um, it's coming pretty soon. Also stay tuned for that. Um, with this, I would uh, stop at this point um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And yeah, um, again, like if you want to have the code, it's on our GitHub page. Feel free to, to get it from there, play with it. Uh, if you have any questions or issues, um, raise an issue there or contact us directly. Um, if you have, if you want to cooperate on something or like if you want to, um, if you want to see some features implemented in it that would really help you, um, let us know. We are always happy for feedback. Um, okay. Thank you, Jakob, for this presentation. So, anyone, uh, if anyone has questions, please. Uh, um, Raise your hand. Yeah, Alan said that that's the debut of Tequila. So that's the first time that uh, Tequila is presented to, uh, to everyone. Any questions? Please ra raise your hand or write it in the chat.
couldn't see any question yet. Well, in the meantime, I have one question myself, so that I wanted to ask you uh, these days, and which is, uh, can we define the gradients numerically in some way? So for example, if I have, uh, if I have some particular uh, way to compute some gradients, can I introduce that in, in Tequila? Uh, yes, you can actually. Like, um, I think you already used it like for the SciPy optimizers, but it's currently only implemented there. But like with the next updates, um, actually want to have it like that you can just like get like your abstract objective back, which is the numerical gradient, because it's, it's actually pretty straightforward to realize. It like, it would, it involves you then, like you have to define like a step size and like the, which like stencil you want to use. But in principle, it works like. Okay, good to know. Any other questions? So now that Tequila is open in GitHub, everybody could start playing with it. And I'm sure that more suggestions will, will arise. Uh, and I also people is asking, sorry? I want to add something. I want to add something. Uh, um, yes, Alan, go ahead. Answering, answering also Alex's question, why is the name Tequila? Tequila was the name of my first quantum computing package in 2005 when we were doing the first quantum chemistry calculation. It was told, called Tony's Quantum Information Library with Alan. But now we re revived the name and now it's called Toronto Quantum Information Library for Applications or something like that, whatever is the acronym for Tequila. And I just want to invite people, the idea of Tequila is that everybody that is doing variational algorithms could express them in a very short uh, Tequila program and make them available as a library. So the ultimate goal of this of, for this package is that uh, as many variational quantum algorithms developers in the world, that want to have very concise representations of their algorithms for base, baselining and benchmarking, could actually use the Tequila package. So uh, I just want to invite everybody in the call to to really reach out and, and, and join the join the, the, the code. We believe it's probably the most modern emulator out there. As some people say, it, re, it, it relies on JAX and uh, of course Open Fermion and many other tools. So we really believe uh, that it's, it's, it's actually a very good tool for everybody to help us uh, standardize variation algorithms. That's it, it's more of a, it's, it's more of a uh, comment. Ah, okay, and Somner will actually put the actual, the actual uh, recursive naming for Tequila. I can see a question from Amit Kumar. He says uh, in the chat, thanks Jacob for your talk. I, I just have a sneak look at the Kila framework and I realize I don't build using number, right? Can you repeat it? I, I can't see the chat, I'm sorry. I just I have a sneak look at the Kila framework and I realize it doesn't build using number, right? He's saying Numba. If it's not using Numba, he's saying. Oh, um, okay. okay. Um, that would be interesting, like to send us like the the actual uh, uh, what's it called, like the actual stack that you get like from that. Like I never tried it with Numba. Um, that would be good to have that information actually. Like it's it's probably like easy to um, to fix or like to make it work. I mean, we got it to run on Windows, so. Okay, any other questions? But like, yeah, regarding that, like raise an issue on GitHub, like that would be really cool. Or like send me an email with the, with the exact errors of this. Okay. 